If you saw my recent video of how the new RTX 3080 Founders Edition is a bad idea for sandwich layout cases like the Ghost S1, you'll be pleased to know that a sub 10 liter RTX 3080 FE build is still totally viable. And it looks something like this. This is the formed T1, which is an incredibly space optimized sub 10 liter case. And today we're going to see how you can make this setup work here. And I also managed to fit this in there as well, believe it or not, the triple slot RTX 3090 Founders Edition, an absolute beast of a GPU, which somehow fits in this case. And we're gonna take a look at that as well. Now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen this case before, I do have the original black one housing my completely liquid cooled gaming and editing system with a 9900KS and RTX 2080 Ti. I've done four videos on this liquid cooled setup previously, just updating it along the way. I'll leave those videos linked down below as well as my full review of this case and how it compares to other small form factor cases. But otherwise, here's a quick 30 second overview. The T1 is the most space optimized optimized case under 10 liters that you can buy, can accommodate 120mm or 240mm radiators, it's almost entirely CNC'd and has extremely good ventilation and airflow. You can also choose between more CPU clearance or more GPU clearance depending on your build and where you put the top beam and this means that up to three slot GPUs can fit including the RTX 3090 Founders Edition. The case does come flat packed and it does need to be assembled. I won't be going over the assembly in this video though as I've already detailed that completely in the initial review, but it is a fairly straightforward and enjoyable process. Working with parts of this quality is a lot of fun, so definitely don't be drawn away from the fact that it does need to be assembled, it is fairly easy. Also consider that it does help reduce the cost of the case quite a bit and really shouldn't take you more than 30 minutes for the first attempt. And so this is the new e-white color that they've been working on and I've never been one for white peripherals or white stuff in general, but this is definitely one of the better white PC cases that I've seen. It's not an eggshell white or an overly cool white, but just a nice neutral, really true white. I will say though, the finish on the black version is definitely of a higher quality since it is actually anodized. The sample I received does have a few marks here and there, but hopefully it's just due to being an early sample. But in general, black does look a bit more premium in person. And the case maker does need your input down below. The panel color hasn't actually been finally decided for the white model. And here are your current options. You've got a really light silver, a dark chrome, which has a bit of a bronze tint, and also plain black, which just ships with the black model. All three look really good on this case, but I would probably lean towards silver or dark chrome, most likely dark chrome if it didn't have that bronzy goldy tint. But now let's talk about the actual build and some of the parts that you'll need to keep in mind. And this build was mainly focused on just testing the RTX 3080 and 3090 Founders Edition, along with a 240 mil liquid cooler. So the motherboard, CPU, RAM, and power supply those are kind of irrelevant because in a couple of weeks, we're all going to be building with AMD Ryzen 5000 anyway. So when it comes to the liquid cooler on the T1, it's important to do your research to see which ones fit and which ones don't. And I'll leave a spreadsheet down below which covers all of that for you. The one that I'm using here was just one that I happen to have on hand. It's Cooler Master's Master Liquid 240L V2. And this was able to fit in both the two slot and three slot mode in the T1. I've yet to properly test this cooler against other 240 mil coolers, but so far I'll just say that it probably wouldn't be my first pick based on performance. And then for the fans, it's the same setup as my own system, two slim 120 mil Noctua fans sandwiched between the radiator and the top panel, exhausting out of the case. So let's start off with the 3090 Founders Edition, and this was easily the tightest graphics card fit that I've installed into any case. There's barely a couple millimeters of clearance in any direction, and the only way that I could get it in there was to build the case around the card and the PCIe riser. The top beam and the front panel need to go on after the card has been installed, which 
is a bit hilarious, but this is the only way this card will actually fit in this case. And I was able to feed the two 8-pin PCIe cables between the front of the card and the front panel, and overall it is looking like a pretty sick setup, but how is the performance? Well, after 30 minutes in a Heaven 4.0 loop, the 3090 settles in at 75 degrees C with an ambient room temp of 20. This is 7 degrees C warmer than an open test bench with a faster fan speed as well. And honestly, Honestly, that's a lot better than I was expecting. I've done a full video on the new flow through cooler design and how it shouldn't work with this setup here, but it does look kind of viable. Let's see if we can make it a bit better though. The biggest question that a lot of you had with this setup when running the 3080 was whether or not flipping the power supply would improve things, since that way the card would be able to pass hot air through the power supply and then it could be exhausted out of the case. This sounds like a sensible approach on paper, but once you actually use these cards and realize how much heat is actually being passed through this end of the cooler, it just doesn't seem like a great idea. And here are the results. We drop a measly one degree, but with a significant increase in noise. As the power supply is now getting force fed a ton of heat from the GPU, the small 92 mil fan does everything it can to evacuate it. It does to some degree, but this is definitely not a configuration that I'd recommend. Case orientation and whether the power supply was exhausting at the floor or top of the case also didn't make a difference. But we can still improve things a little by undervolting the 3090 to 860 millivolts, but keeping the clock speed the same at around 1850 megahertz, we're able to drop four degrees C along with a significantly lower fan speed and noise level. Then by biasing more fan speed to the card's blower fan and not the flow through fan, we can drop another three degrees C. Overall though, I would say that this is a viable setup and I really didn't expect it to be at all. It does feel very inefficient with the flow through fan just dumping a bunch of heat directly at the back of the power supply, but with undervolting and fan tuning, you can get GPU temps down to the high 60s. But this is probably what most of you are interested in running for your own builds, especially focused around high-end gaming, seeing as the 3080 does offer 85 to 90% of the gaming performance of the 3090, but at less than half the cost. And with this setup, seeing as the 3080 Founders Edition is a much smaller card, we can run the T1 in two slot mode and then offset the power supply to create some distance for the flow through cooler. That pocket of hot air can then be drawn in through the radiator and fans and then out of the case. So running the card stock here without any undervolting or fan tuning lands us at 76 degrees C. That's only two C warmer than the end case M1 and four C warmer than an open bench. And we can see just how critical offsetting the power supply fan is here though. We're running nine degrees cooler than the Ghost S1, which is also a sandwich layout case. By undervolting the RTX 3080 to 860 millivolts, again, leaving the boost frequency alone at 1860 megahertz, so there's no real performance impact, we drop a further seven degrees C. That puts us right in line with the NCase M1 and an open test bench while also undervolted. The T1 also manages to run slightly quieter than the M1 here due to less total fans. And then biasing more of the fan curve to the blower fan as opposed to the flow through fan actually resulted in a warmer running GPU and a noisier configuration overall. So it seems like this is not something worth doing for the 3080. But overall, this is excellent performance for a sub 10 liter case and great news for those looking to replicate a similar setup. This build is quiet, relatively cool and the airflow setup totally makes sense. And honestly, I did not expect either of these configurations to work anywhere near as well as they actually did. The 3090 Founders Edition I was expecting to be an absolute mess, but with some undervolting and fan tuning, you can get the temps down to the high 60s, which is totally usable. Then when it comes to the 3080, this is, dare I say it, almost a perfect setup for a sub 10 liter case. The airflow direction and setup just works so well here and that small pocket of air between the power supply and the flow through fan is so, so critical. Now, for those of you interested in water cooling and getting the best possible thermal and noise performance that you can get out of a case like this, I will be putting a 3090 in my personal system in the near future. So as always, a huge thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed down below if you aren't already and I will see you all in the next one.